I'm just giving uh, Malcolm and, and Reggie a few stories about Zen and philosophy. I told them a story about Deepak Chopra. How many of you have ever read Deepak Chopra? Seven uh, laws of success, uh, seven spiritual laws of success, and sharing with them some thoughts and how we can improve. And, uh, one of the stories I told you about the chapter of uh, uh, the law of, of least effort and what that really meant. And uh, it's not about not giving effort. It's, it's, it's about how to be smart and how you use your effort. And I told them and I used Deepak's, um, uh, his, his accent, his Indian accent, and I said, birds don't try to fly, they just fly. <laughs> Fish don't try to swim, they just swim. Shooters don't try to shoot, they just shoot. And uh, that's not in the... Uh, <laughs> I added that uh, to make a point to, to Malcolm. And it's, it's one of the things we try to do in talking to the players is, is to discuss things that we really believe are important. And, and that is that, you know, you got to remember basketball is a game and it's supposed to be fun. And when you put too much pressure on yourself, when you get all stressed out about the winning and the losing, um, you really lose your focus. Um, because what, what we should be doing right now is, is working to be better, trying to improve. Uh, work on our offense, work on our defense, work on our special situations. And uh, we do it every day in practice, but you have to have the right attitude to do it. And if you, if you do it where it's a struggle, it's like I'm trying hard but getting nowhere, that's a problem. But if you're enjoying the process and you're learning and you're listening and you're trying to then apply what you learned to uh, your performance, then, then it works much better. Do you think both of them have their pressing themselves? Well, I don't know. Pressing is, it, 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 I, I think everybody wants to win. Mm -hmm. I, I, there, no one chooses to fail. They just haven't figured out a better way to perform. And so when we lose a game, it's very important as a coaching staff for us to be sure that our guys don't get down on themselves. Because it's, it's very, very easy as a player. It, we won five in a row, and you guys were asking about us about the winning streak. Well, that's a distraction, actually. You're thinking about a whole series of games and well, what's gone on in the past. And uh, when you, you lose a game, you definitely don't want to be looking backward. Uh, we need to be looking forward. We need to be planning ahead. And we need to be playing in the present. Uh, and that means today, today only. We only have control over this one day. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. Um, we, we don't know the circumstances we're going to be dealing with from day to day. And uh, we want to keep controlling the things we can control. We talk all the, all the time about what discipline is. And discipline is doing uh, what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, and do it, do it to the best of your, your ability every single time. And with that, we've got to be very disciplined right now in doing what we're supposed to do, which is practice and prepare properly to play as well as we can. And to prepare properly, you have to have the right attitude and you have to have the right work ethic. And that work ethic is about making a lot of sacrifices. Uh, you know, you can only have one leading scorer each game. You're only gonna have one leading scorer for the season. If guys start to worry about uh, I had a bad game, I didn't score very well, and they start putting pressure on themselves to score more, they're taking their focus away from the one thing they should be doing, and that is playing hard and playing well. Uh, my son and I talk all the time, and uh, he reminded me yesterday of an expression I always use that he's starting to use now as a coach all the time. It's not about playing time, it's about playing well. Did anybody have a question by the way? <laughs> North Carolina. You're playing them again. What did you learn from the first time you played them? Or is this a completely different team now than you guys were then? Or is there something you could take from that game? Well, we, we believe North Carolina uh, is truly one of the best 
college basketball teams in the country and have been all season long. They have the biggest and best front court in terms of height, speed, quickness, and skill uh, with Tyler Zella, John Henson, and Harrison Barnes. They create a whole series of questions that you have to ask and then have the answers for. And it makes it very, very challenging on an opponent uh, to defend them. In addition, they have the most cerebral point guard in the country, a young man who was born to play the point. He's been playing the point guard position since uh, sixth grade when I first knew him in elementary school. And he's just grown into that position. He's the best passer in the country. He's also uh, a player that knows the North Carolina system and is a coach on the floor. He knows what Coach Roy Williams wants, uh, probably even before Roy knows he wants it. Um, uh, Kendall knows who's got the hot hand. He knows who's got the mismatch. He knows what he should be doing. He knows what his teammates should be doing. And he orchestrates them very, very well. Let me finish the answer the question about their defense. What makes them so good defensively is the, the number one thing you look for on offense is easy shots. And those big guys take away all the easy ones. So it, it makes them a, a, a great team. And, and a, a, we're going to really have to bring our A game to, to uh, compete with them at a high level. You said you knew Kendall as a kid? Sixth grade. He used to come over and play at our, our Patriot Center at George Mason University with our college players when he was uh, 11 years old. Wow. So We try to recruit about... him. By uh, the time he got to the eighth grade, he was ranked the number one eighth grader in the country. And uh, his dad was in our arena sitting talking to me, what do you think, Duke, Carolina? I was like, what about George Mason? <laughs> Duke, Carolina? <laughs> what is it that you sign him at, at 11? Well, he handled the ball so well and passed it so well. But one of the, one of the, the true uh, characteristics of a great point guard is they keep their head up. They never look down at the dribble. They, they, they see the whole floor. Your eyes are like a camera. And for a passer, you need the wide-angle lens. And, and uh, for a shooter, you need the narrow lens uh, to focus in a, in a, on a small object. Uh, but Kendall's got that wide-angle lens. He sees the whole floor. And uh, he's got the ability uh, not only to see the open man, but throw the exact pass that player needs to have thrown to him so that he can catch in rhythm, in stride, and make the shot that Kendall's already envisioned him catching and making, whether it's a dunk, a layup, or a jump shot. Coach, how important is it to contain all the excitement when it's a big club in the Well, um, one of the things is we hope there is a great crowd on here. You know, we, we want there to be a lot of enthusiasm, create a lot of energy. Uh, Energy has a way of, of elevating your physical effort, uh, but uh, the, the physical part of the game is only one of four very important essence to commitment. Physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. The physical, the energy in the arena will help. The mental, the preparation that we're doing now has to prepare us to be very good mentally. The emotions, you have to be able to control. We were able to do it at Duke in a hostile environment, the question is, will we be able to keep our poise at home when the crowd is cheering for us? Because sometimes you get like overexcited and try to do things and instead of doing them simple. Uh, you, you, you try difficult things to like get the crowd excited, and uh, that that's a mistake. Like uh, like passes that are passes or shots or, or you know uh, taking risks defensively that weren't planned. Uh, and then the last part of commitment is spiritual. And spiritual is about team spirit, about everybody pulling in the right direction. All players want to play well themselves, but they have to put the team first. They have to put whatever is happening out there, whatever the team needs them to do, whether it's play great defense or block a guy out or get a rebound, or if you're on the bench, you got to cheer for your teammates, you got to believe in your teammates, you got to play with a great deal of confidence. All of that is really spirituality. It's about belief. Jim, uh, nobody on this roster has beaten North Carolina. Does that matter? Uh, that's not really true, because my coaching staff and I have beaten North Carolina. <laughs> the playing with us, the uh, players. Yeah, well, 
But we feel we're all a part of the same team, and, and our coaches are trying to share with them the things that go into defeating a team like North Carolina. Did you talk to them specifically about when you beat that particular North Carolina team and you told them those stories? No, because um, that's not the team we're playing right now. Mm -hmm. but what we're really talking about is us. It's really not about the opponent. You know, every opponent we play is very good. North, North Carolina has some great assets, but so do we. And we got to find a way to bring out the best in ourselves and try to minimize their strengths. And both are uh, a, a challenge. And uh, we need everybody functioning with the right attitude and the right, right energy and effort. Uh, in order to execute the game plan. Was that, was that uh, in that final four year at Mason? Yes. You know, that, that run and the tournament? That was the second game. Uh, it would be in 65-60 if I recall correctly.